and gentlemen, welcome to the Col de Torini, France, in a 911 Carrera T. And it is awesome! Always wanted to drive a colder terrain here, it's been on my bucket list for ages, so real box tick of this. And the fact that I'm doing it in a car that Porsche has specifically built for puristic road driving doesn't get much better than that, does it? So, the point of this road trip, and there is a point, and it is a hell of a road trip, is Rich Pierce and I need to bring this car from Nice. We arrived in Nice at 9 o'clock this morning on a flight from Gatwick. Today is Saturday by the way and we have been tasked with getting this car back to Porsche GV in Reading for midday on Monday so that a selected batch of UK journalists can drive this car and give their two pence. So we have a very important job which is why we spent the first day dicking around on the Col de Torini instead of heading north. bringing this car back to Reading, safe and sound, 48 hours. Rich and I, as a team, are also going to be assessing this car and finding out if its credentials as a proper puristic driver's car actually has come to fruition. So I better get him back in the car then, really, hadn't I? Oi, oi, there he is. Oh, hello. So I've explained how we've got um, 48 hours to get back to Reading, basically. Yeah, and it's the only further south in France. Yeah. Do we still need our walkie-talkies? Hold on, mate. Okay. Say that again. Over. Over. Just going to say, do you think we still need the walkie-talkies? <laughs> no. <laughs> How'd you turn them off? Let's have a look at the Carrera T spec then, shall we, which is heavily focused on the driver. Building on from the base Carrera, the T adds a PASM Sport chassis, reducing its ride height by 10mm all round, as well as a shorter final drive ratio borrowed from the S at the back of the car, plus a mechanical LSD. Inside, driver touch points include basic four-way sport seats with cloth centres, a smaller diameter GT wheel, and a shorter, stubbier shifter taken from the 911R. As for weight, Porsche says the T is up to 20 kilograms lighter than the similarly spec Carrera, thanks to a pairing back program that rids the car of rear seats, some sound deadening and the PCM, though you can option that back in at no cost. The T actually borrows slightly thinner rear glass than the new GT2 RS, and there's door pull straps taken from the Rensport parts bin too. On top of that, Sports Exhaust and Sport Chrono, minus the dash mounted lap timer, adds to the car's unique spec, which on paper makes this a really promising new addition. Could this be the pick of the non GT lineup? We'll have to do some more driving and find out, then, <laughs> won't we? Really, is the answer to that. To be continued. drive we did, all through the afternoon and into the evening. We'd got so carried away enjoying the tea on those coals that we completely lost track of time and opted to stay locally for another night, via some dinner in Monaco and a lap of the famous F1 circuit of course. Tomorrow, at last, we begin our journey home. Morning, 7.30am, swimming pool. We are off to do some more coals today, namely coal de vents. Eh? Take a picture. Richard P is up and about taking pictures already as per 
So yeah, I went to Monaco yesterday evening, followed by another early start, which is ideal. Here he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's crack on. Right, so Richie P is out the car. He's getting some more pictures of this driving along this beautiful, beautiful road, which is the Col de Vance today. As we mentioned yesterday, we drove the Col de Torini, which was incredible. I'm so pleased that we have driven that road now. That is a box ticker. This morning, we are going to start our ascent through France. Uh, up to our overnight stop in Reims, and then from there we'll go on to Calais, Dover, and then Porsche GB HQ in Reading. But we couldn't leave without trying at least one or two other passes. Thoughts on this car then, because at first, I must admit, I was struggling to get to grips with it really, and really kind of understand what the point of it is. Carrera T's main issue is that the 911 Carrera out the box is a fantastic 911. It's plenty quick enough, it's perfectly tractable, usable every day, and it has bags of performance. So why would you need anything else? Well, 24 hours on and a lot of mountain passes later, we are starting to get the point. The thing that lets the 991 generation cars down non-GT is the gearbox. That seven speed is not an enjoyable gearbox. It's clunky, it's not nowhere near as direct as it should be. It can be very vague, particularly when coming out of that final seventh overdrive gear. And it just doesn't give a very good 911 driving experience. However, to many intents and purposes, that's the remit of the Carrera T is to address problems of that gearbox to right the wrongs of it and to a large extent Porsche has succeeded here. Really it all comes down to feel because the throw through the gate isn't any shorter than you would find on a 991 Carrera but the feeling of it is exacerbated by the shorter stubbier shifter itself. It's amazing how such a small detail can have such a big and profound effect on a car which begs the question Why didn't they use it in the first place? But there's plenty more to it than that. The T is quicker to pull away from corners thanks to that shorter final drive ratio. Its chassis is markedly more focused and we even like how much noisier it is from inside the cabin too. The T is absolutely built on the base car, but is it now the pick of the current Carrera range? Coming up in part two, we reach our definitive verdict on the Carrera T and decide whether it leaves us warm or cold on our journey back to the UK. <laughs> well, if it is, it's a fun car, but is it a special car? 